Hello, listeners. This is Kat, and welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This will be the continuation of Weekend at Bakugo. So this will be Part 17, Chapter 18. In for four, out for eight. In for four, out for eight. Bakugo was sitting on the toilet with his head in his hands, one leg bouncing up and down in agitation. Izuku hadn't knocked the bathroom door at all, nor had he tried to coax Bakugo out. He knows me better than that. He knows me better than anyone. He took another deep breath, followed by one more long, slow exhale. The jigging in his leg, slowing as he began to rein in some of the panic that had flashed blood at his brain when Izuku had said, had said, shit, okay. Bakugo rolled his shoulders and shook his arms out. He needed to move. His first instinct would be to run the energy off, to spar until his brain went numb and his body ached. That wasn't an option here. If he ran now, it was all over. They needed to talk, or at least Bakugo needed to talk. Properly. With words. And like fucking fuck did he know how. Instead, he stood up and bounced from foot to foot and met his own gaze in the mirror. Hizuku didn't look upset by what he remembered. Bakugo's stomach did a weird little hopeful wobble thing. He looked... happy? His stomach stopped wobbling and began to outright dissolve. No, that was too much to presume all... He could say for sure was that Izuku hadn't looked pissed off, and that would have to do. He took one more deep breath. Bakugo grit his teeth, set his jaw, and glared down his nose at his own reflection. Okay, let's fucking do this. With his back ramrod straight, he turned and yanked the bathroom door open, only to nearly tread on Izuku as he toppled backwards inside. Bakugo blinked down at him, lying flat on the tiles. Were you just sitting outside, leaning up the door? He grumbled, the corner of his mouth itching to creep up. Absolutely not, said Izuku, smiling brightly up at Bakugo. Tch. He shook his head slightly, stepping over Izuku. What time is it? 3.30, Izuku grunted slightly as he rolled to his feet. Bakugo scrubbed a hand down his face and glanced at Izuku, who was struggling with the now far too small t-shirt. It was now more like a crop top than anything. It would have been funny if Bakugo hadn't been struck dumb by how fucking pretty Izuku was, caught in the light from the bathroom. Tongue between his teeth again, Izuku was trying to get a grip on the material. Bakugo watched as he huffed, nose scrunched in frustration, making funny little noises as he twisted. Jesus fucking Christ, look at him. He must have been smiling, and Izuku must have caught him. Kachan! Don't just laugh at me, help! Oh no. Fuck no, he grunted, smooth. You suck, Kachan, Izuku hissed back, now very annoyed. His face was pink and his brow furrowed. Fuck this, he muttered under his breath, and Bakugo's eyebrows shot into his hair. Izuku grabbed the hem of the shirt with both hands. With one quick pull, and without the faintest flash of green, he ripped the shirt from hem to collar, then shrugged out of it like a jacket. I really like that shirt, he said with a sigh. This is your fault, Kachan. He brandished the shredded shirt, then balled it up and hurled it at Bakugo with a grin. Bakugo caught it before it hit his face, but only just. Huh? The fuck? You could have helped. Yeah, no, I couldn't have. Bakugo only shrugged instead, as Izuku rummaged for a new shirt. Now. Say something now. He opened his mouth and shut it again. Any time, fuckwit. Anything. Izuku picked up his own phone and flashed Bakugo a small smile. I was always said he wanted to know as soon as you turned back. The words tumbled from his mouth before he could stop them. Anything but that. Yeah, I remember. Izuku sank back down to the mattress, cross-legged, and began flicking through his phone now, eyes darting back and forth. Bakugo remained standing, awkwardly. Deep breath. Try again. Staring at the t-shirt he was still clutching in his hands, he started. Look. But Izuku interrupted glancing up from whatever he'd been reading, head tilted to one side, as if surveying Bakugo, he said very quietly, Why didn't you say that the party yesterday was your idea? Bakugo's half-cocked, total clusterfuck of a train of thought plowed headlong into a wall. His eyes dropped again, and his stomach followed. Does it matter? He asked the t-shirt still clutched in his hands. One question ruining his plan to steer the conversation. One foot started to tap as the nerves blossomed again. I think maybe it does. 
Izuku's voice twisted upwards at the end, and Bakugo hoped it was hope he could hear. The urge to run still crept down his back, despite him knowing he wouldn't want to be anywhere else right now. Look, Bakugo tried again. Is, uh, deck, hmm. Excellent start. A plus. Round of a fucking applause. He heard Izuku chuckle, and he flushed. You can still call me Izuku, Kachan, Izuku whispered. Bakugo's head snapped up to see Izuku's eyes flick away from his face to one of the many posters adorning the walls. I, I actually think I'd like you to, you know, if, if you want. Bakugo's eyes went wide and he swallowed. Okay, 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 okay. Look, I, Izuku, geez, how does that feel so different now? I wanted to do something, something nice, I guess. I don't fucking know. He ran a hand through his hair, puffing his cheeks out, and Izuku stood up. Why? Because. Bakugo threw both hands up, fingers spread wide. Izuku stepped towards him, and Bakugo eyed him like an opponent, every nerve on end. Then Izuku looked up, and their eyes met, and the storm threatening to rage inside him hushed. His foot stilled. His hands relaxed their death grip on the t-shirt, and he sighed. Because I like you. Izuku stopped in front of him, a soft smile on his face, eyes shining. Really? Really. Makako watched as the first face he could remember seeing after his parents split into a blinding smile, and joy rolled off Izuku in waves. Izuku. Makako breathed, relishing how new the name felt in his mouth despite saying it all weekend. He reached for Izuku's fingers but ended up with his arms full as Izuku rushed him. Strong arms wrapped around him, lifted him, and spun him around. Oi! he yelped. Let me go, you damn nerd! Never! Izuku laughed against his chest, and goddamn if that didn't soften everything in his chest. If it made Izuku laugh like that, then he could spin them round until they vomited. Eventually, Izuku stopped, but didn't let go. Bakugo brought his arms up and around him, and they just held each other in the dark of Izuku's room. You know, I really like you too. Izuku said into Bakugo's chest. He could feel hot breath through his shirt. Of course you do. I'm awesome, he rumbled quietly, flinching slightly when Izuku pinched him. I figured, you know, with the hug and the spinning. But it's nice to hear. It's a fucking godsend to hear. I'll tell you every day. The clear affection in Izuku's voice made Bakugo flush, and he didn't doubt it for a second. Izuku's voice quivered when he continued. I... I never considered that you might like me. Like, that you liked me back. I, I mean, I hoped, but... Back. Liked me back. Izuku. He leaned back slightly. Look at me. Izuku did, and Bakugo considered just staying like this forever, as he braved, tucking a curl behind Izuku's ear. It's always been you. I'm sorry it took me so long to realize. Izuku's face crumbled as his eyes filled with tears. Kachan, Izuku hiccuped. You t took I ages. He grinned through his sobs. Oh, that's how it is, is it? Bakugo wrinkled his nose and dropped his arms dramatically. He bent backwards in Izuku's hold as if he were trying to pull away. No, no, Kachan, you took the perfect amount of time. I'm sorry, come back. Izuku hiccuped, laughed, tightening his grip, and Bakugo absolutely didn't smile at the feeling of Izuku's hands pulling on his shirt, reeling him back in. Such a rude nerd, he muttered when he straightened back into the hug. Says the loudmouth that beats me in nearly every test, Izuku quipped as he squeezed him. Something clicked in Bakugo's chest, like a key finding its lock. He smiled again. He wondered if he'd ever stop. That's because you're a moron. Izuku muttered something that he couldn't quite catch then. Say again? Izuku stopped breathing for half a second before answering. I said, shouldn't we tell Aizawa that I'm back? Like hell you did, but you're probably right. Do we dare wake a racer head at what, 4 a.m.? I bet he's awake already. Bet he isn't. You want to fucking go? Bakugo grinned down at where Izuku still had his face pressed against his chest. Izuku snorted and rolled his eyes, but... He let go and headed to his chest of drawers. Bakugo loathed how cold he felt once Izuku had moved, and realized that it felt like a part of his chest had gone with him across the room. With a huff, he picked up his phone and pulled up the contact. His thumb hovered over the call button. 
If he's asleep, he'll kill us, said Izuku. I'm telling you he isn't, Bakugo replied, watching Izuku rummage. He might kill us anyway, I suppose. If he's awake already, I'll give you this. Izuku emerged from the drawer and held up a limited edition All Might trading card. And I know you don't have this one already. Izuku waved the card in front of Bakugo's face. I do not have that one, goddammit. And if he's asleep, then I get that Bronze Age plushie that I know you absolutely do have. You son of a bitch, Bakugo hissed. You're on. He pressed the call button with a little more force than necessary. They stared at the phone like it was a bomb as it rang. Click. You've got to be kidding me, Bakugo. Came a gruff drawl down the line. Afraid not, sir, Bakugo replied. He shot a grin at Izuku, who frowned back and mouthed, proves nothing. Their teacher sighed before speaking again. Midoriya. Yes, sir? How do you feel? Fine, sir. Pretty great, actually. Their eyes met over the phone, and they both went pink. Good, said Aizawa. I'll meet you both in your common room in fifteen minutes, and we'll go and see the principal. I'll give him a heads up. Yes, sir, they replied together, and the call ended. Bakugo pocketed his phone and went to his bag to pull out a hoodie. Kachan. He grunted in response as he wrestled the sleeve the right way and began to pull it on. What made you realize? Bakugo stopped, only his hair sticking through the neck of the hoodie. Does that matter? He asked the fleecy inside. I guess not, but I'm curious. His head popped through the hoodie, and he pursed his lips at Izuku. Kirishima. Huh? Fucker's annoyingly perceptive, and he... Bakugo chewed on his words for a second. He made me realize that it's not up to me who you deserve. The feeling of needing to run was creeping back. Izuku's eyebrows rose, and he stuttered. D didn't deserve... Then his eyes narrowed. You thought you didn't deserve me? Kachan, if anything, it's the other... Stop, Bakugo interrupted sharply. But Izuku opened his mouth to argue. Please, he breathed. Kachan. I... Bakugo heaved a sigh, and then, under the weight of everything this weekend had thrown at him, plus 3 a.m., a dam broke. I... I've got some stuff I need to work on, I know that. That deserving, not deserving bullshit is part of it, I think. And this weekend has been a lot. Jesus, the last half hour has been... Kirishima helped, and Aizawa, and I promise I'll fill you in, but not... not now. Izuku came back to him and held out a hand. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Bakugo took Izuku's hand and let him lead them to the dorm room door. While locking the door behind them, Izuku whispered, Are the nightmares regular? More often than not, Bakugo said. Yours? Izuku blanched before nodding once. About the same. He gave Bakugo's hand a squeeze and muttered as he led them up the corridor. Maybe... Maybe we can talk to someone about it. You know, together. Bakugo stopped dead in his tracks, and Izuku was pulled sharply back. He spun to look at Bakugo. Kachan, what... You do that? What? Come with me to... To talk to a proper person about... About shit. I'll come and talk about shit to as many proper people as you need me to, Izuku grinned at him. Despite the joke, perhaps because of the joke, a lump formed in Bakugo's throat. He tugged Izuku into his arms once more and pressed his face into the green curls. I was right, he mumbled. I don't deserve you. Ka- Izuku's retort was cut off as Bakugo pressed his lips to Izuku's forehead. It surprised them both. Pulling away, Bakugo cleared his throat gruffly. Come on. Aizawa definitely will kill us if we're late. He marched off up the corridor, face a furious pink, Izuku following along behind him. He didn't look round until, as they began to descend the stairs, he felt his arm being tugged upwards at a very strange angle. Izuku, what the fu- He turned to see Izuku still clutching his hand, floating just above head height with his spare hand covering his face. What are you doing? Bakugo hissed. Get the fuck down. I can't, Izuku hissed back. Don't you think I would have done so if I could? How long have you been up there? Izuku blushed horrendously as he muttered through his fingers. Since you kissed me, it'll wear off when, when the butterflies die down. Bakugo grinned and preened under the fact that he had caused this sort of reaction. Instead of answering, he altered his grip on Izuku's hand and continued down the stairs. 
Izuku bobbing along behind him. Kachan, I might be able to get Float under control again if... if we weren't holding hands, Izuku whispered. Hmm, yeah, probably. Bakugo shot a smile over his shoulder up at Izuku. Too bad I'm never letting go, huh? He heard Izuku laugh lightly and felt lips pressed to his knuckles. Bakugo gently squeezed the hand in his and realized that it was exactly as he'd imagined it on the way back from the store. Warm, calloused, crooked, and like it was made to fit in his. All right, listeners, this concludes chapter 18 of Weekend at Bakugos, the last and final chapter. Chapter 19 will be up next. I hope you all have enjoyed this fic so far. Eager to hear your thoughts and reactions. And as always, thank you so much for listening. <laughs>